Welcome to this SIGO online training demonstration. In this session, we will provide a tutorial for the process of creating a virtual host bus adapter, or VHBA. A VHBA gives a physical server access to storage. This assumes that the fiber channel switches and the storage arrays are configured as well as the VHBA. In a prior online training session, we created a server profile. We will use that server profile to create a VHBA. Let's go to the XMS server to begin the process. As with other configuration processes, there are a couple of ways to start the VHBA creation process. We can use the common task selection, or we can select virtual resources from the accordion widget to see the VHBA summary screen. Then press the new button. The first step in the workflow allows us to select a server profile. The server profile links us to the physical server that will get this new virtual interface. We will choose the server profile we created in a previous online training session. Then we get to name the VHBA. The name is arbitrary, but the name will be reflected in the host, with the exception of EXX 3.5. More about that later. There is room for a description that helps provide more details if necessary. Then I must define termination for this new virtual interface. In this example, I have only one active link into the storage area network, so that's what I'll have to use. Now I get the opportunity to choose some optional settings for this VHBA. The local ID setting applies to ESX 3.5 hosts only. Refer to SIGO product documentation for a full discussion of the local ID setting. Worldwide name ID allows me to define the last three hexadecimal digits of the worldwide name for this VHBA. This can be a useful feature. For example, as a SIGO virtual I.O. administrator, I know the prefix of every VHBA worldwide name and I can assign the last three digits as I see fit. This allows me to predetermine the worldwide names that are used and I can have the fiber channel switches and storage arrays pre-configured to use the worldwide names of the VHBAs I create. So, with the storage and SAN pre-configured, my servers immediately have access to the LUNs they need as soon as I create the VHBA. Persistent mapping allows me to present storage targets to the host in a consistent way. This is equivalent to the function of persistent binding on physical HBAs. Finally, LUN masking allows me to display prescribed LUNs to a host. This is equivalent to the LUN masking feature in storage arrays. Although LUN masking can be configured on both the storage array and the Seago IO director, it is best not to combine these functions and create extra management overhead. We just offer the option to allow the chassis to fit into any given storage environment. The summary screen allows me to check my work before I continue. When I press finish, I get a screen showing me the results of the process. When I close the confirmation screen, I am taken to the VHBA summary screen. Here I can check the state of the virtual interface and make sure it is up and running. It may take a few seconds to complete the VHBA creation process with the physical server. Refreshing the browser window will show us when the process is complete. That completes this demonstration of creating a virtual host bus adapter. Now let's turn our attention to the hosts to see how these virtual interfaces look on different host operating systems. To review, we see three VHBA interfaces one for each type of host operating system. VHBA1 is on a Windows host. VHBA2 is on a Linux host. And VHBA4 is on an ESX host. On the Windows host, we can use the device manager to see the virtual interface and the LUN associated with it. On the Linux host, we can use the fdisk-l command to see the LUN, SDA, provided to the operating system by VHBA2. On ESX host, we will use the vSphere client to see the virtual interfaces. However, ESX 4.0 displays Seago virtual interfaces differently than ESX 3.5. In both cases, we look under the Configuration tab 
at the storage adapters configured for a given host. This example shows an ESX 4.0 host with several Seago Virtual Hostbus adapters listed under the InfiniBand Host Channel Adapter card. The name of the Virtual Hostbus adapter is provided by the chassis and is prefixed by Seago underscore. This example shows an ESX 3.5 host with Seco Virtual HBAs listed under the heading of Unknown. The virtual interfaces shown are just placeholders defined when the Seco host drivers are installed. In fact, in this example, the only virtual interface configured on the chassis is labeled VMHBA32 on the screen. Unfortunately for ESX 3.5 hosts, the name given to the VHBA by the chassis does not correspond to the name shown by the host. VMHBA32 is actually named VHBA4. It's the VHBA we created earlier in this online training session. XMS can show the correlation between the two names, and there is a command that can be run on the ESX host to do the same. That command is ESXCFG-XGMAP. When new virtual interfaces are created on the chassis, they occupy an available position in the placeholder list. The local ID setting is used to assign a virtual interface to a specific position in the placeholder list. Care must be taken not to assign two separate virtual interfaces the same local ID and therefore the same position in the placeholder list. It is worth noting that ESX 4.0 does not need the local ID setting. One final note. We viewed VHBAs and LUNs in their most simple form. It is more likely that some volume management software will be managing the storage resources on your hosts. Those tools will behave the same with Seago Virtual Interfaces. That completes the process of creating and viewing a virtual host bus adapter. Thanks for watching.